Hi there, welcome back to Hardy Brothers Outdoors. It's Josh Hardy here. Uh, I'm on my John Deere 2032R compact tractor. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the braking system on here. And a little feature that may be well known to others, but, but wasn't to me. And uh, when I went online to look for some information on it, I really couldn't find anything. So um, I thought I would talk through it. Maybe this is common knowledge to all of you. Uh, for some of you, you may not even realize it's there. But on the two series tractors, at least the 2032R and the 2038R, I'm not sure about the 2025R. But on this tractor, uh, there is a joined brake pedal. And uh, you can take a lock off that pedal and operate the brakes independently. So there's a couple reasons why you'd want to do this, and there's a couple reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what the benefits of doing that are, as well as uh, what the risks of using this feature are, and some cautions that you should know about. So uh, the primary reason why this exists is to enable tighter turning or a, or a much tighter turning radius. And uh, I found out about this feature probably two years ago uh, by accident, or not by accident, I actually just realized it was there, kind of had an idea from reading the manual, but had never had a, a reason to use it or try it. Uh, and now having gone back to look at it again and realizing that uh, I was using it, you know, incorrectly and could have uh, created some, some challenges. So uh, by taking that, that switch off and, ind and independently using the braking, you can either lock the back left tire or the back right tire. And by doing the back left tire, you're going to make a harder left turn. By doing the right turn or uh, brake, a harder right turn. And what I was doing was tilling uh, some food plots, and I was getting down into a narrow section, and I realized I couldn't get the inside portion tilled. Didn't want to back over everything I tilled, so uh, I reached down, flipped it off, and I was able to make that hard turn and till the inside. And I thought, wow, that's great. You know, something I'll probably use uh, quite a bit, which I never used it again. Upon reviewing the instruction manual, uh, what it says is to not operate that when you have a three-point uh, attachment, uh, you know, in use. And the reason being is that you could damage the three-point hitch or the, uh, the three-point attachment. So if you think about that sharp turn, it's not following the, the natural progression of the wheels. In my case, a tiller I probably could have caused uh, pressure against the PTO shaft. So that was my lesson from before. Now, uh, fast forward, I built this beautiful uh, pole barn cabin. This first floor garage, second floor cabin. And uh, I've got a very low spot on the downhill side that needed to be filled with gravel. So I ordered nine tons of crushed limestone and powder and it's on the opposite side of where we are right now and I was scooping it driving it in well inside of this pole barn I have poles every eight feet I uh, wish I hadn't done that or wish I had figured out how to do a bigger span but I've already got 10 foot ceilings and uh, I needed to be able to hold up the load bearing walls and the roof above uh, so anyway we have eight foot spread on those posts I also have a portion uh, down here that has a large curb on it because I'm on a downhill on my uphill side to help kind of deflect water and things like that. So anyway, to backfill this bottom side, I need to be able to go pick up the gravel, come into the, uh, the pole barn and shift and turn between one of these five uh, openings. And to get this tractor to make that turn with a bucket of gravel, and to be able to approach the end and make a dump without uh, coming in crooked, hitting one of the posts or what have you, was extremely challenging. Now, I'll tell you that uh, I made probably 15 attempts or 15 trips, bucket loads, and made it work. A lot of backing up, a lot of turning, three point, or, you know, even more than three point turns uh, to get in and get squared up. And somewhere along the end of it, I don't know what caused me to look down at my feet, but I looked down and remembered, hey, you have these turn brakes. Uh, flip one of these off and see what it does. And so as you'll see in the, uh, the video where I'm demonstrating here, 
that uh, I flipped that off and you can make almost a 90 degree turn. So you lock up the right back tire, give it gas, and, uh, and it just shifts the whole thing. And I can drive right into the bays, dump my gravel, and do the exact opposite on the way out. They always say you can never have a, a big enough barn. If you're going to build a barn, build it bigger. This one's 28 by 42. Uh, I already wish I would have gone bigger, but you know it is what it is. Uh, maybe the next one will be bigger. So um, basically, wanted to make sure that you understood kind of the value. If you're in a two series, and probably all the tractors above this uh, two series have this feature uh, and functionality. I know it's not on the 1025R that my brother has. Okay, so I decided that uh, the example inside the barn wasn't enough, and I wanted to do more of an analysis of the actual turn radius. And a turn radius is half of the turn cir circle. So really what we're going to look at is the turn circle. Uh, without the brake, how wide do I have to turn to make my turn? And we'll measure that, we'll mark it, measure it, and then we'll try it with the turn brake. Now obviously one of the, the challenges with the, uh, the turn brake is because that tire locks uh, and we're going to be on gravel here, we're going to actually you know move the gravel. So in your yard may not be the best place to use the turn brake uh, because you may tear up your lawn. Um, but out here we're using this out on, on a lot of uh, farmland and uh, woods and things like that. So a little less worried about that. So we're going to get at it get a, uh, a feel for what that turn looks like and I'm going to shoot that from both uh, a behind view so we can see the the turn around the cone and also an aerial view from uh, from the drone. Okay, so that was a pretty significant difference in uh, turning uh, circle and obviously turning radius because that's half of the circle. So uh, we're going to take a quick measurement and see what those look like. I checked both the inside and outside tires. Obviously with the bucket on there, there's even a, a, a wider uh, clearance required, uh, but I just want to see what the shift is there. It looked like it was about half, so I made it back inside the, uh, the closest cone on the last one with the outside view. Let's check it out. Alright, so we got the measurements, uh, a little bit of poor planning, I didn't bring four cones, instead I brought three, so I've switched out the first cone where we turned uh, with a bucket, and again, this is not scientific, this is my own you know, quick experiment, uh, so everything's not going to be exact, and maybe they tell you in the specs what they're supposed to be, but uh, for me it was a, a pretty cool uh, understanding of what the difference is. 
So I've added the third cone back in. I'm gonna step out of the way here so you can see it in just a second. And uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the measurements. So without the turn brakes on, the outside of the uh, left tire is at this cone over here and the outside or the uh, yeah, the outside of the um, right tire over here all the way out of here at the end is 200 inches here is roughly 142 inches so my turn circle is 142 to 200 inches and uh, 142 that's about 12 feet and the tractor's five feet wide so another 60 inches so uh, and I've got spacers so those are approximate but basically uh, 12 to 18 feet clearance if you're going to turn around an object and again this was turning right at the object not making a big swooping turn but that still would be the same distance I actually have That. So with the turn brake on and trying to turn approximately the same exact spot, we cut the uh, outside turning uh, distance in half. It's right at about 100. And so over here, we're closer to about 44. So 44 to maybe 104 on the inside turning. So it cut the turning distance uh, in half, essentially. Uh, and obviously, you know, the radius, if you want to factor in the radius, it's, it's half of uh, that turning distance. So half the distance uh, from the circle. So, um, and we've got, you know, half a circle distance. So anyway, pretty, uh, pretty clear advantage. Uh, I used it in the barn, used it out here. Uh, you could probably use it mowing if you're not mowing, you know, well manicured lawns. So one last final point before I conclude this video. You need to make sure from a safety perspective, and I can't emphasize this enough, that this is just a temporary use. As soon as you're done using it, relock the, uh, the joined pedals. Because when the pedals are joined, the tractor stops in a straight line. If you're moving at any kind of speed and you hit one of these independent brakes, the left or the right, you're going to cause the tractor to shift and possibly tip. Uh, or roll over. So um, great functionality, great tool. Don't know if you've ever used it. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have and, and where you use it, how often you use it. Uh, if it was new to you, I'd love to hear if this was helpful. Uh, but if you hit that like and subscribe, we've got lots more content on the 1025R, 2032R, 4052R, lots of implements and attachments. Uh, we have a whole new hunting series. We've got our wood miser sawmill. Uh, series and um, most importantly and probably our biggest passion around here as we like to say outdoors is always in season we have a huge habitat management project uh, that we're working on uh, on an 80 acre strip mine where we're turning it back to, to native habitat uh, and we're working with some great agencies and nonprofits to do that so uh, thanks a lot for stopping by really appreciate your support and uh, leave us a comment a like share it with a friend and we'll see you next time